Tonight, learn more about the SGA candidates. Plus, organizations raise awareness about Black History Month. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for February 18th, 2014. I'm Haley Greathouse. And I'm Courtney Addison. Thank you for joining us this evening. Tomorrow, Troy University students will decide who will run Troy University Student, uh, Student Government Association for the next school year. Chantia Wilson gives us a preview. Troy University Student Government Association will hold its officer election Wednesday, and according to SGA clerk Jake Thibodeau, it's a good time for students' voices to be heard. Well, tomorrow is definitely the big election here on campus. It's the SGA executive officer election, and um, this is just a time where the students can actually voice their opinion and elect the officer they want to serve as their student leader for the next year. Thibodeau adds that he feels it's important for students to come out and vote because the people they will be voting for could play an important role for the university. D these leaders that are going to be elected tomorrow are going to make changes on this campus that you know could make a huge impact in the long run and so um, the election tomorrow is very important. I'm expecting a big turnout to see you. To vote, students simply have to go by the SGA office in the Trojan Center to vote. Thibodeau explains the process and said it shouldn't take long. Well, e each student comes to the SGA office where the election is um, from 8 to 5, and their student ID is required just to verify they are, that they are students. And, um, you know, th there, there might be a line sometimes, but once you get in and get out, we're going to be working our best um, to make sure everybody's voice is heard. Um, the process only takes about five minutes. So um, the students just need to come, uh, know who they're voting for, and uh, bring their ID, and we'll be ready to go. Shantia Wilson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The SGA officer elections will be tomorrow from 8 to 5 in the SGA office in Trojan Center, room 215, and students will have to have their, have their student ID in order to vote. A former juvenile probation officer who exposed the mistreatment of black children in the American court system will deliver lectures at three Troy campuses this week. Denny Abbott filed a federal lawsuit against the state of Alabama in 1969 over the severe mistreatment of black children at a state institution, leading to dramatically improved conditions for children. Abbott will discuss his experiences and his recently published book, They Had No Voice, My Fight for Alabama's Forgotten Children, during a series of lectures that are free and open to the public. Abbott hopes his experiences will be encouraging to others. I, I want to tell people that, look, everybody has a role and responsibility in protecting children. And I want to raise that consciousness in people's minds that when you have a chance to help someone who cannot help themselves, you have a moral obligation to do that. And uh, so that's one of the messages that I try to, to, to tell people about. Abbott will speak in the Rosa Parks Museum Auditorium on Troy's Montgomery campus tomorrow at 7 p.m., the Troy campus inside 105 Patterson Hall on Thursday at 2.30 p.m., and at the Dothan campus inside the Sony Hall Auditorium on Thursday at 7 p.m. We'll hear more from Abbott later in the show during Trojan Talk. Well, February is Black History Month, and many organizations on Troy's campus are raising awareness. That's right, and Troy's African American Alliance held an event last night to do just that. Casey Freeman shows us more. The African American Alliance held their third annual Night of Color, an event in which students come out to honor Black History Month and gain knowledge of different African American leaders. I hope to gain a little bit of knowledge on the different speakers that um, the different organizations will be presenting and also to gain, you know, a little insight and inspiration from their speaker tonight. I'm a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and our fraternity play a big role in uh, Black History Month and I just came out just to hear some, some key facts and just, you know, to be a part of my culture. From this event, African American Alliance Vice President Lynn Williams hopes students learn more about the African American leaders that changed the United States. He hopes to broadcast to the students that um, we always celebrate history, um, especially black history and everything that we struggled through from the 60s, 70s, and 80s up to the present now. We came a long way and just hope students take a part in history. Students were exposed to different leaders from the South. A lot about um, people in Alabama that made history and, and people recently, you know, that made black American history, things that I didn't know before. After the event, students wanted more people to embrace their heritage and some thought the Nine of Color was a success. Just don't 
just don't let our heritage die. Come out and support everything that you can. Try to learn everything you can know about your, your race and your culture. It was very informative and inspiring. Casey Freeman, Troy, Trojan Vision News. And tonight, as part of Troy's Black History Month events, the attorney for the family of Trayvon Martin, Benjamin Crump, will speak on campus. The event will be tonight at 7 in the Trojan Center ballrooms. And now taking a look at news from around the state. And Montgomery officials from the Humane Society of the United States are in Montgomery to recognize five people for their roles in one of the nation's largest dogfighting investigations. The investigation last year led to the arrest of 13 people from Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and Texas, and the seizure of 367 pit bulls. That number quickly grew to more than 400 because some of the dogs were pregnant and had puppies. And in Dothan, city commissioners are weighing a proposed ordinance that would allow people to drink alcohol outdoors during special events. The proposal is on the agenda for discussion at the commission's scheduled meeting today. And in Huntsville, state and local officials are set to celebrate a milestone for a North Alabama auto engineer plant. Governor Robert Bentley, U.S. Senators Jeff Sessions and Richard Shelby, and others plan to commemorate the production of the three millionth engine at Toyota Motor Manufacturing's plants today. And still to come on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, one senior from the men's basketball team earned a distinctive award for his performance over the weekend. Mitchell Spoon will tell us more when he joins us with sports. Now Mitchell Spoon joins us with sports. So Mitchell, this past weekend was full of um, Trojan athletics and both the men's basketball team and the baseball team had really big wins and it seems like the good news just keeps coming. That's right, Courtney. For the men's basketball team and the baseball team, they each had a player receive an award for the performance over the weekend. But I'll let you know who right now in sports. Senior guard Jeff Malay was named the Lou Henson Award National Player of the Week earlier today for his performance on Saturday in Troy's 85-81 win over Sunbelt leader George State. In the win, Malay scored a career-high 27 points against the Panthers, who had previously been undefeated in conference play and were riding a 14-game winning streak. The senior was 8 of 12 from the field, including 4 of 6 on three-pointers. He also finished the game with 6 rebounds and 2 assists. Malahi, Malahi is the first player from the Sunbelt to earn the award this season. Head coach Phil Cunningham explained what makes him such a talented player. Jeff Malahi, man, he's, he's terrific driving the ball because he's strong, he's physical, he's quick, he'll set you up because he shoots the ball so well, you have to close out on him and he'll shot fake you and drive you. And, and, and man, he had a heck of a game. Was, he's one of the most underrated players in the league. And if you look at his numbers, the numbers he's putting up this year, and he, I know he had an off game Thursday night, which, which he doesn't do that very much, but he's, you know, he, he's, been, he's been right there. Uh, he's, been, he's been so consistent. He's shooting the ball so well. And he's got a good assist to turn over. But he, he's, you know, he's playing at a high level as, as a senior. He, he's, a, he's a talented player. The Trojans returned to the court on Thursday when they traveled to Raging Cajun Territory to take on Louisiana Lafayette. And for the women's team, they take their shot at the Rage of Cajuns a day earlier when they take on ULL tomorrow night. The Trojans have won five of their last seven games and will look to keep things rolling against the Rage of Cajuns who are one and a half games behind them in the Sunbelt standings. Troy is coming off of a 111-90 win over Georgia State on Saturday. In the game, Troy made 15 three-pointers, just one shy of tying an all-time school record. Sophomore guard Ashley Ke Beverly Kelly led the Trojans with 32 points, 13 assists, and 8 rebounds. She was just two rebounds away from becoming the first ever Troy player to earn a triple-double. Beverly Kelly's 13 assists were the most for the uh, Trojans since 1997. Senior guard Joanna Harden scored 22 points in the win and now averages 25 points per game, ranking her as fifth in the nation and best in the Sun Belt. As a team, the Trojans also led the conference in rebounds, blocks, and steals, and are second in assists and three-pointers made. For Louisiana Lafayette, they snapped an eight-game losing streak on Saturday with a 77-76 win over Sunbelt leader Arkansas State. The two teams met earlier this season, with Troy winning that matchup 87-75 at home. The Trojans are 7-6 all-time against ULL and have won three of the last four meetings, but they are just 1-5 in Lafayette. Wednesday's game will be the first between the two teams at the new Cajun Dome as the previous six have been at Earl K. Long Gym. And Troy Junior outfielder Joe L. Bennett was named the Louisville Slugger National Player of the Week on Monday by the Collegiate Baseball newspaper. Bennett was 3 for 5 with three home runs and six RBIs in Troy's 14 4 win over Northern Kentucky in the fourth game of a four game series over the weekend. Bennett hit a solo home run in the second inning, a two-run shot in the fourth, and a 3-1 blast in the eighth to lead the Trojans.
Bennett became the first Trojan to nail three home runs in a game since Adam Bryant did it in 2009 against Sanford. This selection marks the fourth consecutive year that a Trojan has been named to the award. Troy will be back on the field when they host Central Michigan in a four-game series beginning on Friday. And the Troy women's tennis team was forced to cancel its match against Cornell on Monday due to travel concerns for the Big Red. The, tro the Trojans have replaced that match with another against the North Florida Ospreys on Thursday. The match will begin at 2 p.m. and will be at the Lunsford Tennis Complex. The Trojans haven't played since February 8th when they took down Jackson State 6-1 in their home opener. North Florida played its most recent match last Wednesday at Central Florida where they won 4-3. So, Courtney Haley, congratulations both to basketball and baseball for their players getting that award. I am know they earned it and they're really excited about it. Absolutely. It's so nice to see hard work pay off and uh, hopefully they'll be able to keep it up and um, best of luck to everyone. Of course. Thanks, Mitchell. Thank you.